Do you have anything you want to say to Canelo Alvarez, who has a fight with Amir Khan coming up in a couple of weeks? It doesn't matter who wins, just give me my belt. Hey, I need my belt. I'm ready. I'm ready, guys. All right, CrossFitters, in today's video, we are going to be talking boxing. And I wanted to cover in the first video on boxer profiles, my personal favorite boxer, and that would be Triple G or Gennady, Gennady Vichgolovkin. Gennady comes from the glorious nation of Kazakhstan, and he comes from the city of Karaganda. He was born in 1982 when it was still the Soviet Union, so he <laughs> was raised in the rough environment of the Soviet Union. His older brothers, Sergei and Vadim, would actually take him down the street and would point out guys and men and that were way bigger than him and older than him, and they'd just be like, all right, you're gonna go fight him. Are you afraid of that guy? And Gennady would respond with, no, I'm not afraid. And he'd go and fight these guys, and he must have done well because he ended up making a career out of it. His two brothers would end up going off and serving in the Soviet military, and of course with the collapse of the Soviet Union in the late 80s and early 90s, there's a lot of turmoil and chaos happening there, and unfortunately his two brothers would end up perishing in the military, one in 1990 and one in 1994. That basically meant that Gennady and his twin brother Maxim were the ones that were left to take care of the family. Uh, he had a Russian father who was a coal miner, and he had a Korean mother. So that was kind of the situation they were in at that time. And the two of them were actually both amazing amateur boxers, had great pedigree. And uh, according to a lot of people that watched the two and knew the two, and even uh, Gennady himself, his uh, slightly younger brother of only 15 minutes, uh, Maxim, was actually the better, more talented, more technical boxer. When the 2004 Olympics rolled around, Kazakhstan had to send somebody to go box, and they could only send one person, and it came down to the two brothers. And the family ultimately decided that the older brother, Gennady, would go. Because uh, in their culture, the, the oldest son is the one that gets the choice and gets to choose to do what they want to do. Max is my twin brother. 22 years ago, my first time I'm going to a boxing gym with my brother. We just fight as kids, yeah, sometimes in home, in the street, yeah. We were даже несколько соревнований. Several times we had the, the we were in the same competition, but we never fought each other. Either my brother or myself would uh, decide that we, we quit or we will not fight each other. Right now he's my second trainer. I'm just staying next to my brother and maybe I'm helping him psychologically be ready. I feel this is my role in my, this training camp. Uh, here's a fascinating footnote to that story. We've been told that there were several junctures during their mutual development when Kazakh coaches and Kazakh Boxing Federation officials actually thought that younger brother Max was the superior prospect. However, ultimately, it became clear that Max was going to defer to older brother, even though older brother is only 15 minutes older. Showing you, Roy Jones, what a strong cultural trait that is in Eastern Europe. So 15 minutes made all the difference, and that changed both of their directions forever. Uh, Maxim stayed back to work in the coal mines to help support the family, while Gennady went off to try to claim gold. Unfortunately, he would come up short and he would win silver instead, ending his amateur career with a record apparently of 345 wins and five losses, uh, most of them being avenged, and if he did lose, it was usually by a razor close margin. Um, although I have found records that show that his amateur record might have had a couple more losses, maybe around eight losses total, but still, tremendous career. And so the crazy thing is for me to think about is if Maxim was that good, if he was even better than Gennady, imagine if the two of them laced it up and fought professionally. We would have been entertained with these kind of smaller Kazakh versions of the Klitschko brothers uh, dominating their respective uh, uh, weight classes. Unfortunately, this ended up being one of those what-if situations of boxing, of which there are many. But anyway, the career of Gennady is one that I just, I really like. I, I, you look at his record, he has an amazing professional record. He's at 43 fights right now, uh, 41 wins, one loss, one draw, 36 coming by way of knockout, 
So here's just some of the people that Gennady has knocked out in his 23 knockout streak. Uh, I'm going to start with when he won his first title, technically. Um, he won the interim WBA middleweight title from Milton Nunez when he knocked him out in 58 seconds, followed by an upgrade to the regular title when he beat Nilsson Julio Tapia by knockout. And then he would go on to knock out Kasim Uma, Lajuan Simon, Makoto Fuchigami, Proxa, Gabriel Rosado, Nobuhiro Ishida, Matthew Macklin, Curtis Stevens, Osumanu Adama, Daniel Gill, Marco Antonio Rubio, Martin Murray, Willie Monroe Jr., David Lemieux, Dominic Wade, Kel Brook, and then he would end with a unanimous decision over Daniel Jacobs, uh, and Daniel Jacobs would end the 23 knockout streak. Frankly, uh, even his loss and his draw are heavily contested, heavily disputed. Um, I remember watching that Canelo fight, watching the first one, I went down to this Irish bar and uh, watched it. I had my Triple G hat on, and it was funny because I was the only one cheering on for Triple G. All the Irish were cheering for Canelo, so I don't know if it was because the flag has the same colors, basically, and, uh, and Canelo looks like he's Irish. They were cheering on Canelo, I was cheering on Gennady, and uh, yeah, it was interesting watching that fight because for most of the, the rounds, I had it going to Triple G. But as is boxing, and I'm sure a lot of you know, the politics in boxing outweighs anything. So at the end of the day, Canelo is going to be the bigger moneymaker. And since Triple G wasn't able to knock him out, uh, it ended up going to a draw with one of the scores from Adelaide Bird, 118 to 110. Absolutely horrendous scoring and really kind of shows that corruption in boxing. But according to the commission, she was fine. She was good and they made it a draw. And if you look at the punch stats, Triple G did really well. Uh, he, he, he outlanded uh, Canelo in a pretty decent margin. Now, their second fight was a lot closer, a lot tighter on the scorecards for most people, but a lot still had it going Triple G's way, if not another draw. But since it was closer, this time there was gonna be no doubt that Canelo was gonna take it. Even though in a pre-fight drug test, he failed for clenbuterol, which helps you to cut down on body fat while maintaining muscle and strength. So that's where he got the uh, the moniker from some as a uh, uh, Clinello. Despite all that, Triple G still, you know, is keeping on going, keeping on fighting. He had a, definitely had a close fight that ended his 23 knockout fight streak and knockout streak when he fought Daniel Jacobs before the Canelo fight. And a lot of people, you know, Jacobs included, things thought that he had done enough to, to win that fight. But once again, you look at the punch stats and it is still in favor of Triple G, but it isn't based on punch stats alone. It's also, it's based round to round. Triple G managed to get a knockdown there, but didn't get to take him out completely. Anyway, with Triple G, that's the thing that I love about him. The guy just keeps coming, keeps persevering, keeps pushing no matter what. I know there was a little bit of controversy around him potentially fighting Andre Ward and he, uh, people say that he was ducking Andre Ward. But as far as I can tell, when I look at the career of Triple G, he wanted to be the middleweight king. He wanted to be like marvelous Marvin Hagler, just dominating everybody and taking everybody out. Granite chin, hard punching. Uh, I always think of the line that Marvin Hagler said where he goes, when they cut open my head, they're probably gonna see a, a big punch, uh, boxing glove. And I feel that's almost the same way with Triple G, just the amount of punishment he can take and then he can dish back out. And it's crazy because the man's going to be 39 in a week or so. And he's still fighting, still at the top of his game. Uh, it, usually in those lighter weight classes, like aside from the heavyweight guys, when you're getting closer to 40, you are you don't have that uh, ability as much anymore. And they usually fade out faster. But Triple G's still in there and still doing his thing and still bringing the heat. Yeah, when I look at his fights, it just, it, it just shows his... <laughs> his perseverance. I chose a couple that I wanted to talk about specifically where, uh, especially the, the Curtis Stevens fight. The Curtis Stevens fight I thought was really interesting because it showed a different side of Triple G where normally he's meek, mild, uh, smiling, laughing, making jokes. He's doesn't take things too, too seriously as far as you can tell when he's in his interviews. But 
he had a grudge against Curtis Stevens because Curtis Stevens had been kind of talking smack and saying a lot of things. Looking at it though, you were mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk yeah. to me about that. I want to see you no, mad. No, no, no. First time I'm very mad because I see picture, I think I see I saw photo. I'm a, I read Twitter. Oh, too much. Too much for me. He has big mouth. You know, just. <laughs> it's not my style. And that got under Triple G's skin, and he was like, I'm gonna make this guy pay for all these things. I'm not gonna let him off the hook. And Max Kellerman even said, he goes, in your, in your fight, like it looked like you could have probably taken him out a little bit sooner, but you just kept it going. Were you trying to punish him? And he goes, yeah, basically I, I wanted him to, to feel my entire force. And you can see a little bit of a sadistic streak in Triple G, despite that, that uh, calm demeanor. Gennady is always a gentleman outside the ring until someone says something that he feels is is out of line rude uncalled for and then all of a sudden you hear things from him that let you know don't push it curtis stevens before your fight with him he did a lot of talking and then during your fight with him looked like yeah gennady could maybe stop him here and then the next round gennady could maybe stop him here and he just kept punishing him kept punishing him as though you were punishing him for what came leading up to the fight, like you didn't like him. Does the way you feel about your opponent change the way you fight them? Yeah, I remember this fight. You're right, Max. Uh, you know, I don't lose control. I feel him. Just, you know, I can beat him after the first and knock him down. And for me, it's more important, like, beat him, you know, like, maybe, cut, like, Punish him. Punish him, yeah, beat him, beat him, beat him. He's understand, he has bad mouth, you know, like, he understand this is boxing. Please respect boxing, respect sport. Not this, not street fight. You, you want street fight? Let's go. I show you right now where I have time, where I have 12th round. I show you every round. I beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. His corner, respect his corner. He understand, he said, stop, stop the fight. You wanted to teach him a lesson. Exactly. And I think that's probably a, a, a product of being raised in such a tough and hard environment like like a Soviet Union, Kazakhstan, and then post-Soviet Union, Kazakhstan. Um, but anyway, so that fight was was crazy. And then, of course, there was the, uh, the Gabriel Rosado fight that uh, stands out in my mind because when you watch that one, uh, just the amount of damage that Triple G was inflicting on him and the, the heart of Rosado just continually taking the punishment and, and trying to swing back and fight. But uh, ultimately the towel had to be thrown in for him and it was his corner man, it was his, uh, one of his coaches that threw it in, but his father was sitting there just going like, no, no, he, he was gonna let his son take more and more punishment. It made me think of uh, Ivan Drago uh, in Rocky, where he's basically like, if he dies, he dies. Uh, that That's the mentality that it seemed like his dad had for his own son. And uh, fortunately, his corner threw in the towel and stopped that fight, but the damage was, was insane from that one. And the other thing with Triple G is, he wants to entertain his fans. He's doing a lot of the stuff for his fans. And he, he often says in his post-fight interviews and in press conferences that he basically is just Letting, he'll let his opponents take shots at him so that he can keep the fight going, maybe give them a little bit of a chance. Even if he gives them 1% of a chance to come back, he'll give them that opportunity because he doesn't want to end the fight right away. And I think that's absolutely savage. That's such a savage mentality that it's like, uh, I don't want to end it that much. I want people to enjoy the fight and uh, people paid for this, so we need to take the time and, you know, I'll give this guy an opportunity. Maybe he can hit me with some one good shot or something. I noticed you did in the second round today what you seem to do against uh, other fighters in the past when you were having your way with them. You kind of drop your hands and take some punches in the face. Do you do that intentionally and why? Yeah, this is not special. This is, you know, I feel after the first round, it's nothing. It's a very close fight. Just maybe, it's my play. It's my game. 
you're playing a game. Is that to give the fans a show? Of course, everybody come and just watch my fight. Is that to make other fighters brave to think they can hit you so they will fight you? You know, Max, today I, I give chance, may, maybe one percent chance for next fighter. Just, this is possible, just I'm stay here. So <laughs> it's just, it just kills me when I hear him talk that way. But his overall mentality and his overall uh, just determination is, is absolutely insane. Yeah, his career has been, been pretty marvelous, but it took him a while before he got those opportunities, before he got those shots, because being from Eastern Europe and not really having a recognizable name, especially those names aren't the easiest to say, so they're not the ones that come to the top when, when you're discussing boxing as much. As much as there's great fighters that come out of the East, uh, even the Klitschko brothers, as much as they dominated the heavyweight division, even if you think it was a, a, a pretty quiet or or not competitive division during the early 2000s, I mean, they dominated it, but how many people outside of boxing would know who the Klitschko brothers were? and Or any Eastern European fighters. Uh, everybody knows the, the big ones like Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali and, and all that, but uh, Floyd Mayweather. But Gennady, Gennady, Gennady Gennadovich Golovkin doesn't really <laughs> roll off the tongue as much, even though Triple G is a pretty sick uh, uh, nickname. But yeah, people didn't want to get in with him because he was just too devastating. And without that name recognition, it's like the risk reward ratio factor wasn't worth it because you're basically guaranteed to get knocked out and your career is going to be halted by someone that's not as well known. So he had to really, really work and strive. And each fight was just climbing that ladder a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until he was able to secure those big fights that he has now. Although unfortunately kind of closer to the end of his boxing career, or at least the, generally most people's boxing careers, getting close to that 40 mark. But he's still in there and he's still doing his thing. And that's what I really admire and really respect about the man. Uh, where he goes from here, I hope maybe there'll be a trilogy fight with uh, Canelo again. Um, but until then, we'll see where he goes. But yeah, that's that's it with uh, Triple G. I mean, he's definitely the epitome of, of don't judge a book by its cover. He looks so nice and is so pleasant whenever he's talking to the camera, but you can just see in his eyes when he's in there and he's ready to go. You do not want to be on the other end of those those hammers for fists that he's got. And uh, he's proved it time and time again. And anyway, yeah, that's what I think of Triple G. Triple G's an awesome dude. Uh, would love to meet him sometime, that would be great. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in me talking about other boxers and other fighters, please leave some names down in the comment section below. And I'd love to be able to make some videos for you guys in the future. So thanks so much for watching. And as always, I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. David out.